Assalamu alaikum, welcome to my channel. If I help you, do share the video with your friends, subscribe to my channel, and leave your feedback in the comment section. Let's start. So today we are going to solve Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics Paper 3 Core 0580 Variant 32 May June 2020. Let's start with the first question. Paul has a set of eight cards, each with a number written on it. The numbers on the cards are given to us. One card is taken at random. Write down the probability that the number on the card is 1. So the favorable outcome that we want is 1. There are two ones. So write 2 and the total cards are 8. But you can't leave it like that. You have to simplify it. Just put it in the calculator and you will get the answer 1 over 4. An odd number. You know what are the odd numbers 1, 3 and 5. Let's count them. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six odd numbers. So it is six over eight. Again, put in the calculator, you will get the answer three over four. Now we are looking for a prime number. Prime numbers are numbers that are not in any other times table except one in itself. You can watch the video on uh, different types of numbers that I've made and I've gone more in detail there. 1 is not a prime number, 2 is the only even prime number, and 3 is a prime number, and 5 is a prime number. So how many numbers we got now? 5 total over 8. That's our answer. Now we want a number less than 6. All the numbers are less than 6. So there are 8 numbers that are less than 6 over 8, which is 1. Part B. Dina has a set of 12 cards. These are the numbers on the cards. Work out the median. To find the median, we have to write from low to high. We write it in this order. And median is the middle number. But if you have an even number, like you got 12, so you cannot have a middle number, right? Then what we will do is we will cancel one number from each end. And we'll see what is left in the middle. There'll be two numbers. Whenever you have even number, you will be left with two numbers, two and three. So you add them, two plus three, and divide the answer by two. This will give you 2.5. Now we need to find the mode. Mode is the most repeated number. The most repeated number, very clearly you can see, is three. To find the mean, we add all these numbers together and divide by the total numbers. We will get the answer 2.4166. Round it to two decimal place. So we look at the number after the line. It is 6. If you have a number more than 6, then we add 1 to the previous number. So that will give us 1 plus 1, 2. Our answer is... 2.42 to find the range we take the highest number which is 4 and from that subtract the lowest number which is 1 that's it so for range highest value subtracting the lowest value part C Helena has a different set of cards she takes one card at random and records the number shown she does this 50 times the results are shown in the table. So when the number on the card is 1, she picked it up 8 times. Total is 50 because she picked up 50 times. Calculate the mean of her results. When you have in this table form and you want to find mean, then we multiply by our number on the card with the frequency. So 1 multiplied by 8 is 8, 2 multiplied by 11, 22. And then we add it. This will give us 156. To find the mean, the total we have, which is 156, we divide by the frequency. This will give us 3.12. There are many different types of mean questions, and you need to know how to find the mean for each.
Question number 2a. Jeremy goes on a holiday. He parks his car on the in the airport car park from 10 o'clock on Tuesday, 17 July to 17 hours on Saturday, 28 July. The car park charges are shown below. Monday to Friday, $14 per day. Saturday and Sunday, $8 per day. Park days are charged as full days. Find the total cost of parking his car. This is an easy question. He leaves his car on Tuesday, 17 July till Saturday, 28 July. The charges have been given to us. It's a three mark question. It's a very easy question. Just write down the dates from 17 July till Saturday, 28 July. Like this. So 17 July is Tuesday. 18 July is Wednesday. 19 July is Thursday. And the red ones are our Saturday, Sunday. So on Monday to Friday, the cost is $14 per day. So how many, the black do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 times 14 is 126. And the red we have are 3. 3 times 8. The cost on Saturday and Sunday is $8. That's why we multiply by 8. We add it, we get $150. So I hope this is clear. Before we move forward, do remember to like the video if I help you and share it with your friends. Also, we'd love to get your feedback in the comment section. Now, let's move on to part B. At the airport, Jeremy buys a ring for $53 and a watch for $65. Work out how much change he receives from $120. So, he has $120 from that he buys a ring for $53 and a watch for $65 he will get $2 back part C the plane flies from Melbourne to Tokyo at an average speed of 783 km per hour the speed is given to us the distance from Melbourne to Tokyo is 8,352 kilometers. Distance is given to us. The plane leaves Melbourne at 9.52 local time. The local time in Tokyo is two hours behind the local time in Melbourne. Find the local time in Tokyo when the plane arrives. So the first thing we need to know is how much time does the plane take to reach? Any question involving distance, speed and time? We use this triangle. You want to find speed. So that means it is distance divided by time. So let's write down. No, sorry. We want to find time. So it is uh, distance divided by speed. Time is equal to distance divided by speed. Our distance is 8,352 kilometer. Speed is 783 km per hour. This will give us 32 over 3. Change it to a mixed number. You can do it directly in the calculator. Uh, shift, press the shift button. And then there is the delete button. Above that there is this SD. If you do that, it will change into a mixed fraction or a decimal, whatever you want. So you try it. This will give you 10 2 third hours. But we want our, our time to be written in minutes. So it is 10 hours. And for changing the minutes, we take 2 over 3 and multiply by 60. That will give you 40. So it takes 10 hours and 40 minutes. This can be done directly in the calculator. I will show it to you now. So when you put in the calculator, this is the answer 8,352 divided by 783. 
after that just press this button all calculators have it it will give you your answer in hours and minutes so it's 10 hours and 40 minutes and the other SD button that I was telling you about shift and press this button whenever you want to change it into a mixed fraction or a decimal so the plane leaves Melbourne at 9.52 and it takes 10 hours 40 minutes this also I will show you to do in the calculator but first I'm showing you manually so we add it we get 19.92 we have to change into hours and minutes you know in, a, in an hour there are 60 minutes and there is 92 years so if I subtract from year 60 I will get 32 and that 60 I will add to 19 to make it into hours so now I have 20 hours 32 this is from Melbourne time but Tokyo is two hours behind so we subtract 2 and that will give us 18 hours 32 that is our answer now in the calculator if you want to check your answer whether it's right or wrong if you want to check the calculator for the answer this is what I put in the calculator 9 hours 52 minutes 0 seconds we use this button so write 9 press this button you will get this square type on the top write 52 press this button then 0 you need to write the second also even if you don't have plus 10 hours 40 minutes from here and you will get the answer 20 hours 32 minutes suppose your answer is wrong your calculation or something no problem write the answer directly at least you'll get some marks party in Tokyo Jeremy buys a bracelet for 2050 yen the exchange rate is given to us we need to calculate the price of the bracelet in dollars give your answer correct to the nearest dollar very common question most repeated question so we have yen and we have dollars 1 yen is equal to 0 0.0125 dollars the bracelet was for 2050 yen what is the cost in dollars so x is our dollars we just cross multiply we'll get x is equal to 0 0.0125 multiplied by 2050 our answer is 25.625 we need to round it to the correct uh, to the nearest dollar so that means we need a whole number no numbers after decimal so if your number is 5 or more you add 1 to the number before so 25 plus 1 26 is our answer in a the plane ticket costs 680 dollars plus a tax of 16 percentage find the total cost of this ticket there is an easy way and then there is a simple way I'll show you the simple way first so find 16 percentage 16 percentage means 16 divided by 100 of 680 you will get 108.8 .8. add that to 680 and that will give us 788.8 .8 dollars but it is dollars so there'll be two decimal after uh, two decimal points so we need to put a zero here this is the simple way the other one is you want to increase something so this is 680 and you want to increase it by 16 percentage so on the side right 100 plus whatever you want to increase it divided by 100 you will get 1.16 680 multiplied by 1.16 will give you the answer directly you will not need to do this always once you start understanding it is 16 percentage just write 1.16 and that's it question number three belly records the height in centimeters and the mass in kilograms of some goats so this is the height this is the mass some of our results are shown in the scatter diagram 
The table shows four more results, the height and the mass. Plot these points on the scatter diagram. So we have to first understand the grid that is given to us. Here, for the height, every two lines make one point. Okay? So now we have 23. So 23 will be, this is 21, 22, and 23. And mass is 31.2. For the mass, every one point is one only. So 31 point, it's 0 0.1. So 31.2 will be here. And the next we have 30 and 33.5. So 30 is here and 33.5 is here. That will be, then we have 36. 36 is here, two lines make one point and 34.6. So 34.6 will be here. And then 38 is going to be here and 34.8 will be somewhere here. So we have plotted the four points. What type of correlation is shown in this scatter diagram? All the points are going upward. So it is a positive correlation. If the points were going downwards, like if they were this way, then that will be negative correlation. And if they were just scattered around everywhere, maybe a few points are here and here like that, that is no correlation. C1, draw a line of best fit on the scatter diagram. So we need to draw a line here. There's no hard and fast rule, it's a general line. Try to make equal amount of points on both the sides. And that will give us a line like this. Next question. Use your line of best fit to estimate the height of a goat with mass 32.5. The mass is given to us. Mass is this vertical line. 32.5 is here. So look at the corresponding height. Go down and you will get 26. If your answer is anywhere between 25 to 27, it will be accepted there. Now part D. Work out the percentage of the 12 goats that have a height between 26 centimeter and 35 centimeter. So now we need to find the height between uh, 26 and 35 and write it as a percentage. How many goats have the height between 25? I just realized that this is 27. I wrote it as 26, but it doesn't make a difference. It's still accepted. Our answers are between 25 to 27. Okay, moving about back to uh, part C2. So we want before uh, between 26 and 35. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This is 27, and 35 is here. So there are 5 goats whose height are between 26 and 35. Total number of goats are, we count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. To write as percentage, we multiply by 100. This will give us 41.666. Round it to two decimal places. This is 6, so we add 1 here. 41.67 is the answer. 41.67 percentage. So this brings us to the end of this video tutorial. For question number 4 onwards, watch part 2. Thank you for watching.